Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Mom Boss Monday. Thank you for joining me today. In today's episode, we're going to be getting a little techie. We're going to be talking about how to start a blog. What is a blog? Do you even need a blog? So those are the type of questions we're going to be answering in today's episode. I am by no means a tech savvy kind of person. It gives me a headache, these kind of things, starting up a website, email list, all these things. I am no pro at this, but if I can do it, you can too. So in today's episode, first I will start off by answering three important questions and then we'll go over the process of how to set up your blog from start to finish in five steps and then I'll end by giving you some tips, things that I've learned along the way, mistakes I've made, and things I would do differently. All right, so before we move on to the how-to part, I'm going to be answering three important questions. And the first question is, what's the difference between a blog and a website? So a website is more like a static page. It's just there. It's a one-way conversation for you to store your products or or your books or whatever it is that you sell and you have to offer and you just have a simple contact page where people will contact you if they're interested in your service or purchasing whatever you sell but a blog is more interactive it's more like of a two-way conversation it's updated more regularly usually on the weekly basis but it can also be on the daily basis and it's a chance for you to add value to your audience consistently so that you can stay top of mind when they need your service so a blog is something that's updated more regularly either way you should have at least one or the other because you need somewhere to store your information you need a home in the internet and the social media sites that you're currently using that's not a home that's not a permanent home that's you in someone else's home um, and if you're there to market for business purposes, it could change at any moment, just like in Facebook. Now you have to pay to get exposure for your business. All right, the second question, why do I need a blog? Now there are a lot of reasons why you need a blog, but I'm gonna go over two of them with you. So the first one is to be found via Google. This is an amazing opportunity to show up in the search results when someone is looking for what you have to offer. So someone is actively searching for your business um, services or your books or whatever products you have, as opposed to social media where you share these things with people, but some may care and some may not. The second reason is because it's evergreen content. You create it once, you write it once, you publish it, and it's there forever waiting to be discovered for, by someone who is actually searching for it. In social media, you can put up a post and it'll be buried under underneath all these other posts and ads and all these other things in a few seconds. So the third question, how much does it cost? So to get someone to start a blog for you, to set up a website, will run you anywhere about $1,000 to $2,000 for a professional. Don't try to bootstrap this. I did this mistake. There are cheaper options, but trust me, you get what you pay for. If you try to bootstrap this, you'll end up with somebody who isn't reliable or you'll end up with a design you don't like. So I think either pay a professional or try to do it yourself. To do it yourself, it'll only cost about $22 to $30 to set everything up. It can get more expensive depending on different things you choose, but it's not that expensive compared to hiring a, a professional to do it for you. But once you get the hang of it, it's actually fun and you can do changes on the fly yourself once you learn how to do it. Okay, so if you do it yourself, here are the five steps you will have to take. So the first step is to choose a domain name. Now this is basically just the name to your website. And you buy these, they are around $10, sometimes they're even 99 cents. It depends on the popularity of the name you want 
and you just go to a registrar which is like GoDaddy or Namecheap you type in the um, website name you want they will let you know if it's available and if it's not they will give you some other options the second step is to pay for hosting now hosting is just where your website name will live where all your content will be stored so you need that in order to run your website and this will only cost about $12 a month so you pay your $12 to start with and then your $10 domain name is a year I forgot to mention that that's for the whole year so that's $22 so far and uh, after that the third step is to connect them together connect your domain name and your hosting together this is probably the hardest part of setting it up especially if you've never done it before and if you're like myself or you're not really too tech savvy but there are a lot of YouTube videos that will help you with this and once you get this going the rest is kind of smoother sailing so the fourth step is to download WordPress, to install WordPress. So most hosting uh, companies have a button where you just simply press a button and it installs automatically. So that's the fourth step. And then the fifth and final step is to choose a theme. This is just the overall design of your website. There are a lot of free themes, but there are also paid ones, so it just depends on what kind of look you want to go for. I'm using the Divi theme, and this is a theme sold by Elegant Themes, and it's $89 a year. So that's currently what I'm using. I just found it easier to use, but if you are just starting, I definitely recommend that you start with a free one, and then you can work your way up as you gain experience. All right, so on to some final tips that I have for you. So the first one is to know what you want beforehand. Before you start creating your website and buying your domain name and everything else, make sure you know what you want. What do you want a blog for? What are you gonna offer on your blog? And most importantly, what kind of experience do you want your customer to have when they land on your website? What kind of emotions do you want her to have when she lands there? So this will determine everything else. It will determine what theme you use. It will determine your colors. So be specific on that first. And then second is to gather inspiration. So on Pinterest, pin different images that you find that you like, that you would want uh, for your customer and pin them for for inspiration for colors and for everything else you can also look for WordPress uh, websites that that you like how they're structured and go over those make note of everything you like about them so that when you go on to create your own website you will have a big list of inspiration to gather from and then third is to pick at least three brand colors this will help so much because as you're creating your website it's a lot harder to choose from hundreds of different colors as you're creating it when you have only three colors to choose from it's much easier decision to make and it'll make the design look more complete and more organized the fourth tip and this is a very important one is to sketch your design on white paper beforehand I used to just go on and just try to design it whatever came to me but now I find it easier to sketch it out on a white paper exactly what you want this will make it easier as you're trying to design it and also your copy what you're gonna write in your about page your front page and everything else write it on a WordPress um, not a word on a word document beforehand and this will also make it easier you'll just have to copy and paste instead of trying to come up with everything at the same time all right and then the final tip that I have for you is to just aim for a good website don't go out there trying to create an amazing looking website as you're gathering inspiration you may look at all these websites that have it down to the T but you cannot go out and try to create these type of websites on your first try just aim for something basic just get it out the door you can always improve later 
So that's all I have for you today. I really hope you found this episode helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below or shoot me a message, whatever. I would love to help you in any way that I can. Make sure you subscribe on your way out for more business beginner type videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.